Welcome back everyone, taking a look at some sweet altars that I picked up a while ago, I actually bought these over a year ago, back when I had a quote unquote real job and before I was doing content creation full time. The irony now is that I do content creation full time and I can't afford to buy cards. Anyway, all kidding aside, gonna take a look at these sweet altars that I picked up. These are a lot of staples that I use in my Boros deck and my Angels deck in particular. So I'll just go through quickly and talk about each one a little bit, and uh, yeah, we'll get some close-up shots of each card while we do it. But before we do that, all of these altars were done by an eBay artist called Lalico. Uh, they're based out of California, although I think the artist actually lives in the Philippines, so it does take a little while for these to ship. But totally cool, it's totally worth the wait, I'm always super excited when they get there, and I've purchased a number of things from them over the years. Uh, that particular artist probably makes up 60 or 70% of the altars that I own. Um, and I think I own about 50 altars total, give or take. So this is one large chunk of them, and the deck that I really spend the most effort trying to pimp out and uh, get a lot of altars for is my Angel deck. And every once in a while, I'll pick something up for my Mono Black deck, which is sometimes Shieldred, sometimes Josu Vest, depends on how I'm feeling at that moment in time. But it kind of flip-flops between those two things. Mono Black shells tend to uh, have a lot of cards in common for me, so... Anyway, let's get into some of the close-ups. So up at the top here, we have a Homeward Path, and Homeward Path is an absolute must for me. Uh, if you're playing any sort of combat-centric deck, you really want to have control of your commander, so losing your commander is a really bad thing. So I run Homeward Path in just about all of my decks. So an absolute must-have for me, and uh, when I saw the altar for this one, just needed to have it because I know that I run it in all of my decks, and most of my decks will do nothing if I don't have my commander. Next to that, we see a card that I didn't actually have a home for when I bought it, and that's Razia's Purification. But I had been thinking about some sort of land destruction deck for quite a while, and uh, Razia's Purification, really good land destruction card. Uh, right now I'm testing it out in my Gerard deck, because Gerard is actually a pretty good destroy everything in play kind of commander, because you can get all of your creatures back. So testing it in there, haven't actually had a chance to resolve it yet. It's a little tricky at six mana, especially in a faster meta, but so far so good. And I absolutely love the art on it. I love the way the, the white kind of streaks off of the card, just super cool looking. So can't wait to try and get this thing resolved at some point and uh, hopefully it'll seal the game up for me. Next to that, we see my all time favorite card, Sunforger. I love this card. This card has won me so many games of Magic. I'm not even sure if I know how to win games without Sunforger, as made evident by my win-loss record with any blue-black deck that I play. So when I got into the bidding on this card, I put my max bid really high. I did not want to get outbid on this thing. This was a, oh yes, it will be mine. Oh yes, it will be mine. So yeah, just my all-time favorite card. At the time, Sunforger was in an Aurelia deck, but it's been shifted around a little bit. Uh, right now, it's actually in my Sir Gwyn deck, because for a little while I wasn't using Sunforger in the Angels version, but I later added it in. Uh, I should probably switch the versions of Sunforger so that the altar is with all of the other pretty altars in my Angels deck, because, like I said, that's where most of my pretty cards are. You know, the other decks just kind of have a few random things here and there, uh, maybe a couple foils as I found them and things like that, but... Sir Gwyn kind of messed up my deck frame because I had one frame of a Boros deck that was like all of the fetch lands and plateau and sacred foundry and all of my altar lands and like all of the really cool stuff was just in this one deck frame that at one point it was Aurelia, at another point it was a Kyrian Bruce, at another point it was Feather. Uh, then when Sir Gwyn came along, uh, it got more complicated because of Mardu colors and I had to switch a bunch of things around. So now things are kind of like scattered between a couple decks. It got a little weird with that, I probably need to like, just sit down and figure out which altar should go in which deck, that kind of thing, but we'll get to that at some point. But anyway, the Sunforger is super sweet looking, and I absolutely love it. The Pyroblast was in my Akirian Bruce deck for a long time, uh, which I've since pulled apart to make room for the Sir Gwyn deck. Uh, I'm a little bit sad about having to pull that one apart, that was a really sweet deck. But because I play in a very blue, fast combo, near CEDH kind of meta, uh, Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blasts are really good cards to have. So a lot of blue flying around there, a lot of blue wheels, a lot of counter spells, that sort of stuff, and uh, Pyroblast just incredible in that kind of setting. So at one point I had hoped to pick up another Stoneforge Mystic, Sword of Feast and Famine, and Sword of Fire and Ice, but then Stoneforge Mystic got unbanned in Modern, and the prices on all of those went crazy before I could pick up a second copy of that stuff, because I really wanted to make a second frame of an equipment deck, 
and uh, I never got around to doing that before the prices spiked, so... So at the moment, this Pyroblast just sitting in the sideboard because Gerard is my most competitive Boros deck at the moment, and Gerard doesn't really have room for interaction like that, uh, nor does it need it in the same way that some of the other decks do, so... That one just kind of hanging out at the moment, but it will have a home again, so don't you worry. And then next to that, we have Swiftfoot Boots, and Swiftfoot Boots just an EDH staple. So, so good. And for me, I actually run a lot more Swiftfoot Boots than I do Lightning Greaves, uh, because I tend to play a lot more Voltron, and Lightning Greaves can get pretty awkward in a Voltron deck, especially if you have a low creature count. So I really run a lot of Swiftfoot Boots, and this altar is just absolutely beautiful. I love the, uh, the green edging around the bottom. Uh, it just looks so, so good. So really like this one, and I knew that I would always have a home for it somewhere. So this was an absolutely awesome pickup for me, and I really like this one. Moving down to the bottom here, we see a Black Market, and that's for my Mono Black deck. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it switches between Shieldred and Josu Vest, depending on what I'm feeling at the time. I have one Mono Black frame of a deck, and I just kind of switch out the commander, and switch out some of the cards in the middle to follow suit with that commander, so... Uh, at one point in time, it was also Tetsamok. Who knows, maybe it'll go back to Tetsamok at some point, just because Tetsamok's fun. But Black Market is a crazy card. I can't believe I don't see this thing more. This card can do some just really insane things with mana. Uh, there was a game a while ago, it was like a year and a half ago or something, where I got up to 48 counters on Black Market. It's on video somewhere, so you guys can go back and find it. It was one of the Tetsamok videos, and it's just absolutely hilarious when you get tons and tons of mana. But even just getting like five extra mana off of it is so unbelievably good. After that, we see a Blasphemous Act, and Blasphemous Act is just another Commander All-Star. I run it in, like, every single red deck, and I think it's one of the highest-played red cards in Commander, and rightfully so. It's just so unbelievably good. You can really set up some crazy stuff when you can play a board wipe for one red mana, so... It eats up so little of your turn, and you can do so many things after it, or you can play Boros Charms and Teferi's Protections and stuff like that, just... Crazy good card. Knew I would always have a home for this altar, so I really, really wanted to get this one as well. And uh, this one also looks fantastic. And this one lives in the Angels deck currently. And yeah, just another card that's always going to have a home for me, so... And then after that, we see Path of Ancestry. And this is another card that I really run a lot. Uh, I run it in most of my multicolor decks as long as I have enough Path of Ancestry. I think I own maybe about five or six Path of Ancestries, and, you know, anything that's more than two colors, I'm definitely putting one in. But yeah, this particular one lives in my Angels deck currently, along with most of the rest of the altars. Like, when I bought all these cards, I was really shopping for my Angel deck because I knew most of these cards were just staples that would slot into the deck perfectly and always have a home somewhere. So Path of Ancestry was another one that I was really, really happy to pick up. I've gotten better about remembering to use Path of Ancestry, but every once in a while I'll still forget to do that, especially if I'm on camera playing on MTGO. I'm a little bit better about it in paper, because I'm not narrating the game, and I have more time to think about my plays during someone else's turn, and which lands I'm going to use and stuff like that, but uh, I have been known to forget to use the Path of Ancestry on occasion, so don't want to be doing that. And then after that, we see Quicksilver Amulet, uh, a card that I don't specifically have a home for at the moment, but it has been in and out of the Angels deck at points. Uh, I actually think I'd like to try it out in the Angels deck again. It's been a long time since I've actually run it in the deck. Right now, it just kind of sits in the sideboard for that deck. It is good if I know I'm going into, like, a mono-blue matchup, where I know there's going to be some counter spells, uh, because you really don't want to get your Angels countered, especially when they're, like, 6 and 7 mana, you know, against a 2 or 3 mana counter spell. It just... Tempo blowouts, that kind of stuff hurts. But yeah, I do actually want to try it out again because getting your angels in at instant speed can really open up some crazy lines of play, especially when you're talking about like a karmic guide or something like that. I did something really silly once against the mono black player that had like Butcher of Malakir and Grave Packed out. Uh, so I was able to get Karmic Guide and Angel of Serenity. Forget exactly what happened, but I was able to get rid of the Butcher of Malakir and whatever else was in the way uh, all at instant speed and then set up for a big shot on my turn and actually get rid of the Mono Black player through a situation that I wasn't entirely sure I'd be able to get through because uh, Edict effects are particularly bad for Angels, so... But anyway, I'm thinking about giving that Quicksilver Amulet another try just because the Mana Ramp and Card Draw is looking really good in the Angels deck now, I think it should be able to really easily support the Quicksilver Amulet and hopefully open up some uh, crazy lines of play, so... Yeah. Anyway, 
Hope you guys enjoyed this look at some of these cool altars that I picked up for mostly my angel deck. It just so happened that this one particular week, the eBay artist that I use a lot, Lalico, they had just like everything for my angel deck, so it was super, super exciting. And I was really happy that I was able to pick up a lot of these cards. And I got some really good deals on most of them. For the entire set of cards that you see here, I paid about $85 with shipping. So nine cards, $85 what? Averaging just under $10 a card, really not too bad for some sweet looking altars. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. And be sure to use the new TCG Affiliate Player link as it helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything.